Hi everybody, my name is Kasha McNaught and I am pleased to be presenting this webinar to you today, which is on how to stay healthy while working from home. Uh, this presentation is brought to you by Business Station. And if you are watching with me now, uh, please feel free to ask questions as we progress and you can um, pop your comments or questions into the chat box as we're going and I'll also um, aim to leave some time at the end. If you are watching this recording later, it's probably on the Business Station YouTube channel and the recording is going to be sent to everybody um, after this as well. So if you aren't able to tune in now, uh, you may be watching this afterwards, uh, feel free to also um, get in touch with me and let me know any suggestions or feedbacks or requests for similar topics in future. All right then, so I'm going to start by sharing my screen. So um, I'm really quite passionate about this topic because I am a small business owner and I myself work from home. Uh, and yeah, just want to also acknowledge once again that this webinar presentation is possible thanks to Business Station and the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program. Uh, you can learn more about Business Station on their website uh, and I'll also uh, let you guys know at the end how you can um, tune into more workshops and webinars or even book a follow-up one-on-one -on -one session either with myself or one of the other um, amazing advisors that are available to you through Business Station. Um, so just to open today's uh, session, I'm going to be talking very much about, you know, mental and physical well-being today and a big focus of my webinar is going to be about mindfulness and I'm going to be sharing also one of my favorite apps with you guys which I personally enjoy using for meditation every day which I just find keeps me grounded and able to uh, be more present and sort of take a step back from things and you know get some good perspective on where I'm at. Um, but I thought this quote is very apt because, uh, you know, it's pretty much life is 80% what happens to us and, you know, 20% how we perceive it. So the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. Hopefully after today's presentation, uh, there'll be more heaven than hell. So um let's take it away so just to um reiterate what we're going to be covering today is i'm going to be um sharing with you my own personal learnings as well as my top tips and tools for how you can stay healthy um, and look after your both your emotional and physical well-being while working from home So firstly, um, I am just going to introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Kasha and I'm going to stop and sort of go between the two screens with sharing because I know it's a little bit um, death by PowerPoint if you're just looking at my slides the whole time. Um, so I usually am talking more about digital marketing and social media. That's my area of professional expertise. I am an advisor for Business Station now for over two years. Um, I'm also a small business owner. So I've been running my agency, McNaught Media, uh, for five years now in June. And I, yeah, I have worked in an office as well. But since COVID, I've been working from my home office, especially because of the fact that I'm doing a lot of these online consults as well. But um, as I'm going to go over with you today, you know, it does also present its own challenges. Um, yeah, just a little bit more about me so you can sort of understand why I'm so 
passionate about um, this topic. I actually, um, yeah, not a lot of people know this about me, but I'm actually a thyroid cancer survivor. So there's a very faint scar on my neck, in fact. I'm now turning 35 uh, next month. So uh, it's pretty much over 10 years ago now, when I was 24, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I had a big lump on my neck and it was actually my grandmother who noticed it at the time. And I went to a couple of specialists and they said, oh, I'll just get a blood test. But anyway, long story short, I uh, ended up having to have thyroid surgery, getting it removed, radio radioactive iodine treatment. So um, I guess my point is that this is a big reason for me why health and well-being and um, managing stress is a big, big um, part of my life. And I suppose I love to share what I've learned along my journey with others so that they can, you know, also benefit from that because running a small business comes with many, many challenges, um, as well as many benefits. Um, and yeah, managing stress is paramount. Um, I'm also very much um, a lover of health and fitness. I'm a gym junkie. So um, just before this webinar today, I actually was, uh, yeah, at the gym doing my strength training session. Um, those of you who know me a little bit, would also know that I love to go hiking with uh, my friends. I haven't been in a while, to be honest, but um, I'm looking forward to getting out again. Um, I'm also a beach lover and a crazy cat lady. So that's a little bit more about me in a nutshell. Um, and I've had over 15 years experience in advertising and marketing. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to sharing more of my learnings with you guys today. So if you haven't settled in yet, please, you know, make sure you're comfortable and um, yeah, have a beverage at hand, coffee, tea, wine, I suppose, if you're, you know, not working and um, yeah, let's get into the presentation. Um, yeah. And as I mentioned, love to hear your feedback. If you would like to pop anything in the chat at all, um, go for it. Okay. So... You know, when I was researching this webinar and in general, I love human psychology and health and well-being. So it's something that I read about often. Something that I came across recently, which I found interesting, was that um, psychologists say that it's proven that one of the best ways to actually feel better and manage your, no your emotions is by naming them. So giving a name to what you're feeling. So um, this kind of led me to come across a few interesting terms that have been in the media and the news lately, which I think is very much um, applicable to what we are learning about today, as well as the times that we're in and the, you know, um, state of affairs in the world and how it's affecting us all. So this is a really interesting one here. So languishing. Um, I'm sure that many of you have, you know, um, just coming here for a moment, if somebody asks you, how's your day going? And sometimes you just don't have words for it. And you say, uh, you know, it's a bit meh. Well, ultimately, this is the official term for feeling meh. If you don't know what that means, I'll explain a bit further. Um, however, languishing could be defined as, you know, a sense of stagnation and emptiness so this is, you know, um, from the New York Times, you know, it feels as if you're muddling through your days, looking at your life through a foggy windshield. Um, that's supposed to say coined as the dominant emotion of 2021. Sorry, I'm missing the one there by the most recent article in the New York Times. Okay, so I'm going to start out with, you know, a few of the um, challenging things we may be feeling. And don't worry, I'm going to very much address how we can turn this around, but I just think this is worth exploring a little bit. So yeah, I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but a couple of other terms. Okay, this, uh, this is thanks to a really lovely German friend of mine. Uh, her name's Mandy. So, um, you know, Germans have a word for everything. 
And I just love that about the language. I don't speak German. I speak English, obviously, and Italian and um, a bit of French, but there's a word for everything in German. And this one came up during a recent uh, chat with my friend and it was about, you know, those nights when you sort of lay awake and there's just like this endless cinema playing in your head. So anyway, there is a word for that. It's called Kopfkino. I'm probably saying it incorrectly. Sorry, Mandy. But it literally translates as head cinema. Uh, those mental images that, you know, play in your mind with how events will unfold. Um, and when I looked it up, it's more, you know, uh, what do you call it? Officially described as where all our hopes and fears create dramatic narratives for us to spectate whether we want to or not. So this also links into mindfulness, which I'm going to um, discuss with you guys more and more, because this is something that we can sort of address with that. Okay, and my last little um, term for you guys, uh, this one <laughs> is quite apt, but coronosomnia. So uh, I don't know if many of you have recently, or if not recently, you know, during the last 18 months or so been experiencing this, but you know, um, this is another thing, you know, with COVID-19 stress, it's impacting us all in, you know, different ways. Um, even although we're very lucky here in WA or Australia in general, depending where you guys are tuning in from. But, you know, with this COVID-19 stress, there's been huge changes in our routines, decreased activity for many people. And um, yeah, according to sleep experts, uh, this has caused a second pandemic of insomnia. So it's fueled by broken routines and it can be seen as a series of vicious circles as well, because, you know, the more you worry about not being able to sleep, and the more you're out of routine and under stress and duress, the more this is exacerbated. However, um, don't despair because we will be looking on the bright side. So lastly, um, in terms of working from home, I'm, I have to say, I, I'm very grateful to be able to work from home. For instance, right now, you know, speaking to you guys from my studio apartment, it's great. Um, however, uh you know it does come with its challenges okay i've just had a question here as well do i know anything about tinnitus tinnitus actually yes somebody recently mentioned it to me and that it's getting worse and apparently i'm no expert or health expert here but um apparently it's exacerbated again by stress but also caffeine and alcohol consumption is supposed to make it worse that's what i was told but um, yeah, funnily enough, somebody yeah has recently mentioned that to me as well. So um, unfortunately, chronic stress seems to affect us in many, many, many ways. Um, you know, so let's just have a quick look at some of these um, potential challenges of working from home. So firstly, you know, the big one can be feeling isolated, you know, so working remotely, if you're used to being part of a team or even just as a small business owner if you don't have a big team or it's just you yeah it can be lonely for sure second is you know difficulty staying motivated so this could be due to disruptions such as pets children or you know domestic duties um so i personally love the separation of an office versus a home environment because of that as well however um you know we I'm digressing. Uh, yeah, thirdly, lack of work-life balance. You know, it's I. It's much easier if you're at an office during the day and you leave by 5 p.m. and then you leave your work behind. It's at the office and then you come home and then you know that's your home time. However, when you work from home, especially if you're you know in an apartment and you don't have many separate areas, it can be challenging and especially because of you know, these wonderful things, um, as well as, you know, technology and the way we can constantly be on call, uh, it can, it can lead to greater risk of burnout for sure. And lastly, you know, difficulty, not lastly, there's many, there's many more challenges, but these are just some of the main ones I'm highlighting, you know, difficulty, um, eating well or staying active, you know, so, you know, perhaps not stopping for regular healthy meals, you know, it's not like, uh, you're going out to have lunch with friends, for instance, and also, you know, not getting enough exercise if you're sitting all day. Okay. 
so um, enough. That's that's enough of negativity for now. Um, but I think it's important to address, you know, what the challenges are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to be showing you some tips and tools, strategies for addressing these things. So again, yeah, like if you have any suggestions, um, please feel free to uh, type in the chat and yeah, I will share my screen with you guys again. Okay. So um, just to turn this around a bit, um, since I've, you know, been going on about how giving a name to our feelings can be so helpful, what we're going to aim for now as human beings and in general, not only working from home, but all together, the opposite of languishing, which is flourishing. So um, the good news is that, you know, growing body of research shows that there's really simple steps that you can take to recharge your emotional batteries, you know, spark a sense of fulfillment, purpose, and happiness. Um, and yeah, the psychology uh, community calls this lofty combination of physical, mental, and emotional fitness flourishing. So, you know, the term speaks for itself. It's like watering a, a garden and it grows. So yeah, that's what we want to aim for. We want to flourish and bloom. So I'm now sharing with you guys, you know, uh, some of my own strategies as well as what I've researched around this. So first of all is when you're working from home a lot, get outside. So, I mean, we're lucky in WA and Australia that we have, you know, pretty beautiful weather most of the year round. It can be a bit rainy in winter. However, um, it's just got so much um, research behind it but scheduling regular time in nature reduces anger fear and stress and increases pleasant feelings um you know for some people love the mountains others love the ocean so it's you know worth finding your happy place for me it's near the ocean i call i call it vitamin c um spending time offline to recharge your body and soul is so, so important because um, despite the fact that we can be so, you know, hyper connected with these devices, technology, all the rest, uh, it can actually lead to us feeling more disconnected and lonely because, you know, we won't put on this planet to answer emails and, um, you know, check notifications and, even the fact that um, the way our phones and technology is designed, it is, it, it is a bit addictive in terms of, you know, um, I don't know if any of you guys have watched, there's the um, documentary that's on Netflix. Um, don't worry, it's not like some crazy um, controversial thing, but it's very interesting, the social dilemma. So even the way that our iPhones are designed or smartphones, you know, the way that we scroll up that action, it's like, it's like a, the addictive um, scenario where it's like a gambling thing where you're checking a slot machine. Um, you know, even the, every time we get those ping of notifications, it's, it's actually releasing, you know, a stress hormone. It's like cortisol. So it's like, while it's addictive, when we want to check the notifications and it's like giving us the validation and um, external, um, you know, stimulation, it can also really burn us out, you know? So, um, and I'm saying this to you as someone who has definitely been burnt out before and definitely doesn't want to be again. So all I can say is that, you know, if you can limit your exposure to technology, I'm sure it will make you more productive. So yeah, whatever you do, make sure you get some mother nature therapy as well, because, you know, exposure to nature reduces blood pressure, heart rate, muscle tension, and it also lowers the production of stress hormones. Whoops. And that photo is, uh, yeah, me with my hiking group. <laughs> I'll talk, tell you a bit more about that shortly. But, you know, um, the other thing is, apart from getting outside, um, my big tip is to stay active. So, um, I was listening to one of my fellow advisors, Dante's uh, webinar, Dante St. James, he's awesome. 
uh, his webinar recently on avoiding burnout. And he said, you know, he likes to start and end the working day with a walk. So um, he said even just like a short 15 or 20 minute walk because he's a very busy man. But that just will, you know, put you in the right um, mind frame. And as well as that, you know, it's um, walking is, is highly therapeutic. You know, um, there's many great philosophers and um, masterminds who've said, you know, that when they are stuck for ideas, they'll go for a walk. And I'm sure there's another German word for walking therapy and finding your inspiration through walking. Um, you know, and apart from that it's very important for us as humans to move so for example one of my things that i like to do is if possible you know schedule a walking meeting rather than sitting down at a cafe even if it's catching up with a friend for a coffee i like to go for a walk along the coast you know rather than um just sitting and having a coffee so one other thing that i do I follow a strength training um, program at the gym. But another thing that I do is I try to stick to a daily step count. So um, you don't even need to necessarily download an another app for this. If you have an iPhone, you can um, look at your steps on your health app. There is another, well, the app that I do use is called Pacer, um, as in like P-A-C-E-R. But I also wear a, you know, smartwatch. So that um, is really good for tracking steps. But when I go hiking, I make sure I turn off all the notifications because otherwise it's just like a, you know, a phone on your wrist and it's, it's not good. <laughs> so you probably are going like, who is this random dude on my presentation? So this guy's awesome. Um, his name is Diren Cartel, if you haven't heard of him before. And he started this movement, which is called uh, neat up 24 seven. He is a personal trainer and he's got a big, um, social media presence. You can follow him on Instagram. That's his handle there. Diren cartel. He is from the UK and yeah, what this neat up 24 seven movement is all about is what neat up stands for is non exercise activity thermogenesis. So basically it's referring to any movement and activity that we do outside of our fitness gym training program so it's like incidental activity that all adds up to make us happier healthier more active human beings so um what um i love about this guy is that um i will stop sharing for a second just because i'm probably killing you with powerpoint what i love about Darren cartel is that he's first of all he's hilarious and secondly um he was recently, a few months ago, um, in isolation in a hotel room, I think in Sydney, in Australia. And he was determined that he was going to make sure that he achieved his daily step count of 10,000 steps a day, despite being stuck in the small hotel room for two weeks. So um, he did get a, you know, um, what do you call it? Like a treadmill or cross trainer delivered to his room. But Despite that, he was so determined and he was calling everyone out saying, you know, there's no excuses. And he actually got featured on BBC News um, because he just wouldn't give up no matter what. And um, he was pretty much, you know, tracking his whole journey inside this hotel room. And it was actually brilliant. So um, if you guys need motivation, because, you know, we're humans, we all do. I find it really helpful to have people that, you know, you can watch and observe and feel inspired by in different ways, you know? But anyhow, just to uh, reiterate on this, so ways that you can increase your activity level daily, it's really by making small changes, you know? And to be honest, some days I struggle to get to 10,000 steps because I'm sitting here on my butt, even though I've gone to the gym already. However, I try to make small changes such as, you know, take the stairs instead of the elevator or, you know, if I need, I need to go and buy whatever coffee later. So I will walk to the shop, you know, instead of driving. Um, if you guys have a meeting somewhere, you know, you could park a bit further away to walk to your meeting, you know? So it's about making these small changes that all add up. And my tip is that if you're able to take, you know, short 
constant short breaks and um, you know take short breaks and do little walks in between um, everything you're doing every day it's going to be much easier to actually achieve the desired you know 10,000 steps a day which is what um, we're supposed to do as humans um, then you know if you try to just go for one big massive walk at the end of the day so that's my tip but you always can look at it as a weekly average rather than you know just daily so it's about trying to constantly improve and get better okay so um i mentioned hiking earlier so everybody apparently started a new hobby during um covid so mine was hiking um so i started my own hiking group with some of my friends and we came up with the name covid eagles because covid obviously but also because the um, track that we were hiking on at the time was actually, we were following the Eagle Trail. So that was how we came up with our name. Um, but, you know, again, you know, hiking, it's also got so many benefits ap apart from what we looked at earlier with being in nature, you know, boosting fitness, improving mental well being, enabling us to stay social with friends. Um, you know, it's a great way to unplug from daily life to challenge yourself, um, explore the nature trails in and around WA and stop and appreciate the little things, you know? Um, and there's many hiking groups around that you can join or you can start your own. And this is just one example of um, an activity that, that you can include in your life to make you an active person. But if you don't personally love the idea of hiking that can be something completely different. This is just my version of, you know, unplugging and recharging and no notifications. Turn them off on the watch. Um, so you could do all the exercise in the world and um, all the rest. But if you're not putting the right fuel into your body, you're going to probably feel awful and you're not going to be very well um, and you're not going to be able to sustain uh, your energy levels, you know. So, um, for instance, my uh, one bad um, habit that I can fall into is that I get so busy and so um, excited and focused when I'm working that I have the tendency to forget to stop and eat. But then I've noticed, you know, such a big difference that if I actually make sure I have my proper fuel in the morning or at lunch, you know, with enough protein and mac, you know, the right macronutrients. Um, I feel so much better and I'm actually able to last much longer. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a lot more sustainable than trying to live on, you know, coffee and adrenaline, to be honest, been there, done that, trust me, it doesn't work. So um, I'll share a few tips with you guys. Um, so, you know, it's really worth considering what you're eating. And one, one thing that I, that has stuck in my head, I am surrounded by, um, I'm lucky, I suppose, very much so. I'm surrounded by very healthy friends and people. Most of my friends are into health and fitness and gym. My best friend is a personal trainer and she's starting her own healthy meal delivery business. Uh, so that's how I'm staying healthy at the moment. But I watched this show once um, by a movement called Food Matters when I was really trying to educate myself about nutrition and wellness and what we put into our bodies. Um, and there's this quote that stuck with me. And it was, if you don't want to end up being seen by people in white coats, don't eat food-like substances made by people in white coats. So, yeah. What I would say is that if you're too busy and you don't enjoy um, cooking or you don't have the time or, you know, you might be, in my case, you know, I live on my own with a cat. So I really can't be bothered cooking just for myself when I'm working a lot. So I, I opt for a healthy meal delivery option during the week. Um, so there's many of them around depending on your preferences. 
Um, during the weekend, I allow myself a bit more flexibility, you know, 80, 20 rule, especially if I'm going out for a meal and whatever. But um, if you aren't going to, you know, dedicate the time to food prep, then um, consider something like a healthy meal delivery option. Uh, one that I really like, I've tried many of them, is called, um, it's a WA company called Hail the Kale. If you're not in WA, you know, just have a Google, have a look. There's many options around. But um, another really important thing that I have to keep reminding myself of when I'm working from home is to stay hydrated. So um, I find if I'm, you know, out and about and on the move and I'm going to the gym or whatever I'm doing, as long as I have my water bottle with me, it really helps me remember to drink. And, um, you know, if you don't stay hydrated, it can actually make you feel quite average and not very, uh, not able to think very clearly. Sometimes you might feel like you're hungry and you might actually just be quite dehydrated, you know, it can lead to headaches. I literally um, know when I haven't drank enough water because I start getting a bit of, um, yeah, a headache. So if you are like me and you need something to remind you have, you know, I go for a non-plastic, you know, uh, cooler water bottle that I have on my desk that I constantly top up with filtered water from my fridge. Um, because if I don't, I just won't drink it. So I'm going to have a sip now. Uh, suggest you guys do the same. <laughs> um, mm. And then um, just with regards to going for the rainbow on your plate as well. Another really um, good thing that is um, that I like to do uh, when I'm in the mood and I have time is instead of always going to say a, a shopping center or Coles or something, which is not my favorite, um, I love to go and buy fresh produce from my local farmer's markets. I'm lucky that I'm living close to one, um, but there's so many of them around and um, it's just a really great way of supporting, you know, local farmers and um, small business. So, um, Go for the rainbow on your plate. You want to have as many different colors as possible in terms of fruit and veggies and variety. Um, it's giving you something really important, which is called polyphenols, uh, when you're having all those different colors and nutrients. And um, yeah, just try to make sure you're having micronutrients and avoid, you know, excessive consumption of highly processed foods. Okay. So um, another thing that I find helpful, but not only me, another thing that's um, written about when you look up, you know, how to stay mentally and physically healthy and, um, you know, how to feel better when you're working from home is maintaining a daily routine as much as possible. So um, look, I know this is easier said than done. Like, let's be honest, like sticking to set working hours when you're running a small business, especially in the first few years, I get it, it's difficult, but um, if you can as much as possible, you know, it's gonna give you a sense of um, consistency and it's gonna give you more balance. So, you know, scheduling regular breaks and downtime, limiting screen time. So um, there are many apps that you can get now that will, well, actually, it's usually inbuilt to most smartphones. So if you are on your iPhone, you can actually look up, you know, your screen time and you can set these limits on um, apps that you use or, for example, for how long you're spending on social media. Um, my lovely assistant, Sally, um, who's a very talented graphic designer, she showed me, she set up on her iPhone that she has, you know, limits of how much time she can allocate to you know using social media apps each day and then it'll come up and say you've reached your limit for the day so um yeah to be honest um if i look at my screen time screen time hopefully not screen time screen time it can be a bit scary because i use so many apps for work and different things but my way of count counterbalancing this is to i i go i try to go offline at least like one day on the weekend and I don't have my notifications on. I don't check my social media. I don't even check, you know, messenger. So that's one thing that I find helpful. Um, 
screen time. Yeah. Uh, limiting screen screen time could yeah reduce the risk of scream time or uh if it's a good type of scream maybe uh increase it depending what you're after so yeah um again so one word that is really sort of um useful is boundaries and boundaries apply to so many things in life so having clear boundaries with office hours is something that is an ideal um but again you know everybody's got sort of different um working patterns so it has to be what works for you i know you know um co colleagues and friends like to have a nap during the day but then for other people um that doesn't work because they can't sleep as well at night so you need to know what works for you you know with my boundaries i guess uh it's a work in progress balance you know what is work-life balance we're trying to find out what it is right now but for me it's like Sundays I just have to just have a day of nothing otherwise I'm not as productive the following week you know um somebody's commented I Alistair I read about ma uh, magnesium zinc and B6 deficiency due to processed foods we eat now even our shop-bought veg and fruit are missing these nutrients because of fast growth and early picking missing magnesium yep i've started supplementing and can't believe how great i feel okay yeah i actually was going to talk about supplements and i um i left it out only because it's such an individual thing i do take supplements but i've also been at a point in my life where i've spent a fortune on so many different types of supplements but i definitely think that you know there are some essentials like what you've put there you know b vitamins zinc magnesium um because yes uh, the soils are even deficient like you're saying so it's you know even the veggies that we eat now compared to what they would have been like say i don't know 50 100 years ago are missing a lot of these nutrients so yeah it's definitely worth looking into and you know supplementing can definitely help for sure um yeah so it's better to have you know natural helpers rather than um you know prescription drugs where possible so definitely um okay back to this oh and then yeah i uh my thing that helps me use my brain better and be more um useful to people i work with during the day is starting my day with exercise like gym or a walk but you know i also i've been learn i've been learning and I listen to my body now. So if I've had a really, you know, average night's sleep, and sleep's another thing I'm going to get to, I will um, give myself a bit of a break. I might sleep in a little bit more if I don't have early meetings. And, you know, perhaps I'll just go for a walk rather than going and lifting weights because that's another st stressor on your body. And if your body's already over, um, you know, stressed, it may not be the solution for the day so that's yeah that brings us to the next thing which is um you know bedtime hygiene and again magnesium i speak to a lot of people they find that magnesium supplementation helps um some people i speak to find melatonin helps them i'm personally a weirdo and melatonin doesn't work on me but i think that's just due to the fact that if you're um lacking in it it helps and if you're not it doesn't so it's all very personal but there are certain things that can be implemented to assist so for instance you know create um it's it's coined as bedtime hygiene so you know create a re relaxing wind down routine you know so maybe have a non-caffeinated herbal tea before bed um you know getting off your devices and screens i think some some sources i've read suggest two hours before bed i'm saying you know at least an hour before bed you know the the blue light um does stimulate you and keep you awake you know that whole wired but tired feeling um i find if i'm working late and i'm on devices a lot i get this sort of like frazzled feeling so i like to yeah turn the lights off i have this um I sound really hippie now i guess i kind of am a bit but i have this himalayan rock salt lamp next to my bed because i don't like that really harsh light at night you know um self-soothing techniques that you know you can google it there's many um but 
I have some essential oils that I like just to sort of like diffuse or put on my body that are, you know, calming and resting, restful. Oh yeah, a rock salt lamp as well. I mean, they're um, really, uh, I love them because it's not like I believe it's going to sort of create this magical outcome and change my life. However, I just love the gentle light that it has. And there are some apparent, you know, health benefits to having a rock salt lamp as well. Um, it's supposed to um, diffuse the negative ions in the air. So all I can say is that I've had one for ages and I can't imagine not having one. I think everyone should have one next to their bed. Um, I like to burn incense. I like my essential oils. Um, so, you know, practice what you preach. Don't sleep with your phone next to, to your bed. So um, I literally went to um, Ikea on the weekend and uh, yeah, this is sort of amusing. Uh, I'm not a fan of shops or Ikea, to be honest, but I was really proud of myself because I purchased a good old fashioned alarm clock that looks like that thing there. Anyway, however, I uh, forgot how loud they are. So <laughs> it literally gave me a heart attack the other day because it sounded like, I don't know, someone was shattering a million plates in the room. But um, anyway, even if you have this sort of clock next to your bed and you leave your alarm on, on it can be on your phone, but out of the room, it's just gonna help you get out of that, you know, wake up check notifications, go to sleep. Oh my God, I can't sleep. You know, um, oh, right. I'll just check who's messaged me, you know, not good. Um, so yeah, I'm not really happy about the fact that my Wi-Fi box is in my room either, for the, but you know, like, I just think it, it is what it is. So you just reduce how much, um, you know, technology and interference you have in your bed environment as much as possible. Um, and you know, one of the tips that I've heard is also, you know, that works for a lot of my friends trying to go to sleep and wake up at the same time each day um I, again you know it's about that routine and what works for you so there you go whoops okay whoopsie um and then this is something that i um have been doing a bit of and i'm still sort of working on in fact if there's a knock on the door it's because i've just ordered another screen you know better for eyes and you know working etc but Create a separate working space if possible. So again, you know, working with what you have. I'm in a studio apartment. I've literally made this place my gym during COVID, my office constantly and my, you know, retreat. So um, however, if you can have a separate room for your office, I think that's ideal. And if not, you know, have your separate area. I at least like to, um, you know, shut my laptop when I finished working for the, the day or the night and turn off the screens, uh, you know, that I'm plugged into because I feel like that signals to myself, okay, that is, you know, the end of the working day. Um, something I haven't done yet, but I really want to do is invest in a standing desk. So I've heard that a lot of people, my chiropractor told me a lot of people bought them during COVID and are now trying to sell them on Marketplace and you can get Facebook Marketplace. You can get really good quality ones. Um, yeah, secondhand. So that's something I've been meaning to do. And um, even small improvements like, I'll see if I can show you. This is what I got. Um, it's like a, it's called an ergonomic mouse. So um, I think it's definitely helped because I actually, um, yeah, when I'm on phones a lot and when I was using that flat mouse before, I get this, um, it's pretty much called carpal tunnel syndrome, which um, apparently Kim Kardashian got it from taking 2000 selfies in a day. So <laughs> someone's coined it as the selfie wrist disease. But anyway, um, honestly getting this, I, by the way, it wasn't from taking selfies. It was from like working and also um, this ergonomic mouse it's um helping a lot um also you know make sure you stop and stretch regularly um a foam roller that's a great thing you can have by your desk to stretch on the floor as humans you know um we don't spend enough time on the floor so that's a good little reminder um and you know there's lots of like small um movements and regular exercises you can do to help with your posture because um all of us tend to, you know, arch our neck forwards and, you know, cramp up when we're, you know, on computers. So just 
doing simple things to counteract that can be very helpful. Okay. Um, I like to, um, actually, I'll tell you when it comes to this bit, but meditation. So um, this is a really important part of my presentation. And I saved it on purpose towards the end because, um, yeah, it's probably the main thing that I um, find helps me in terms of my overall mindset and just um, day to day life. So just so it's not me telling you and to show you that there is a lot of backing behind this, you know, thousands of studies have shown how much mindfulness meditation can help, you know, with benefits such as gaining a new perspective on stressful situations, building skills to manage your stress, increasing self awareness, focusing on the present, reducing negative emotions, increasing imagination and creativity and patience and tolerance. So, um, I am going to show you in a second, I use an app that I love, which is called um, Waking Up with Sam Harris. So I, during COVID, when we had to stay home all the time, I was meditating twice a day, in the morning, in the evening. I now like to do it um, towards the end of the day. I allocate at least 10 minutes. Um, and I've been doing it now for quite a few years. I do miss some days, but I feel so much better when I'm doing it. So um, I'm actually going to show you my favorite app now. Okay. You don't have to, you know, go and meditate in a cave by yourself for a year and become a monk, by the way. This is literally something that's scientifically, scientifically proven and can help a lot and is used in a lot of um, psychological therapies like con cognitive behavioral and therapies and so on. So um, dialectical behavioral therapies use mindfulness as a big premise, but this is what the app looks like. So waking up app, um, it's got a lot of different things in there, including theory and lessons. And um, I've tried this. There's many different kinds of meditation apps. So you can, you know, try different ones. You can join um, a group and go and learn um, in a class. That's helpful to do as well. But I just love this app because of the fact that it's uh, created by Sam Harris. And if you haven't heard of Sam Harris, he's one of my favorite people in the world that I've never met yet. Um, if I had to organize a dinner party and I got to invite a couple of people, he'd definitely be on the list, him and Ricky Gervais. So he's a neuroscientist, philosopher, and New York Times bestselling author. Um, and this app really explores the practice of meditation and the theory behind it. Um, so I've actually got a, um, link that I should have copied. I'm going to pop it in the chat. Okay. Excellent. If you, if you are watching this, um, after the fact on, uh, YouTube, I will email those of you who have, um, registered and you can also, uh, just get in touch with me if you'd like this. So you can by default go and just get a trial of this app, but um, what I've sent you here in the chat is going to give you um, a free month of using the app. And the other thing is um, th Sam Harris, who's created this app, he has made it so that nobody can not have it. So if you, for, for instance, can't afford the subscription of it, all you have to do, this is the whole, you know, philosophy behind it that I love, is send him an email. Um, you don't even have to give a reason and he'll give you the app for free. So, um, yeah, this is the next bit, a quote by him. Um, so, you know, the past is a memory. It's a thought arising in the present. The future is merely anticipated. It's another thought arising now. So what we truly have is this moment and we spend most of our lives forgetting the truth. So it's all about, um, you know, being present, mindful, having that awareness. Um, the more that I practice, the more I find that when I'm actually with people, it might be um, friends or clients, the more I'm able to remind myself to have that awareness of being present, being fully present with them, even now with you guys, even though this is, you know, obviously virtual. Because... Um, in a world where attention is so commoditized and scattered and um, 
we're so inundated by messages and adver advertisements and propaganda constantly. You know, I really feel like the biggest gift that you can give to somebody that you're with is um, your full presence and attention. So um, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. Uh, the other thing that I was going to say as part of today is um, it, where possible, I think it's also great to, um, you know, get a coach. So I, I do coaching with my clients, for instance, with the marketing side of things, but I have, I have a business mentor and coach. I have a health and fitness coach. And um, yeah, I think um, wherever possible, it's great to have a mentor. And, you know, of course, to stay connected. So um, it's also great. I have, you know, I'm really lucky through Business Station. I have some really, I've made some really great friendships um, with other advisors who I consider my really good, you know, friends now. So if you have, you know, business friends, if you have, um, you know, um, people that you can check in with um, and just, connections you know like staying connected like making time to actually you know see your friends and people you care about that's a huge part of you know staying healthy while working from home and also um you know even if they're not uh in the same country as you make technology work for you and you know you can have a regular zoom catch up with them if it's your family or friends who are away you know um, it's important for us as humans to stay connected because, yeah, that's the thing about technology. You know, it's like we're so over wired, but under stimulated. And we're so over, um, you know, connected and yet um, alone sometimes. So another thing is, you know, making social media work for you. And um, yeah, just um, like I mentioned before, having limits in place, but even Instagram, you know, if you see it as, your personal magazine, you know, you can unfollow any um, accounts that are unhelpful. I choose to only follow things that I find helpful for business or things that inspire me for health, wellness, etc. Now, another thing that's uh, come up recently that I'm going to show you, this was also in a recent newsletter from Business Station, actually, this is how I found out about it, but this is fantastic. So this is a new program that is available for small business owners. It's Buy Beyond Blue. So basically it gives you a um, coach. It gives you six sessions with a um, yeah coach that's able to help you tackle anything that you're finding challenging um, about running your business and um, you know whatever it is that you're going through. It's really awesome. Um, they use something I mentioned early uh, cognitive behavioral therapy to help, uh, you know, you deal with things that you're going through, uh, six sessions, they're free. I've put the link that, um, you can look up there to apply for it. Uh, pre it's done over zoom or the phone, I believe prerequisites are that you can't be already enrolled in another, um, you know, mental health program or care plan, but, um, yeah, I would suggest anybody to, you know, go for this because I think it would be great if we uh, were able to one day live in a world where, um, you know, looking after your mental well-being and um, nurturing your mind and uh, brain is recognized and non-stigmatized as much as, you know, looking after your body by eating the right foods and going to the gym and having a PT. I mean... I think personal development and um, yeah, self-awareness is so important. And um, yeah, anyway, when I saw this, I thought it was really great because, um, you know, as a small business owner, sometimes, uh, whoops, sorry, it's challenging if you're also not necessarily around people who understand the journey because it is a different journey for us. So anyway, that's what I thought would be great. So, um, also I, you know, I'm just going to finish on this note and really, and then if there's any other questions, I can answer them, but having, um, inspiring literature that you can listen to or read around you, um, podcasts, you know, things like that, that can keep you feeling 
inspired. So this is my favorite book at the moment. I've um, given it to a few friends. Um, it's pretty much like a um, philosophical modern day version of say like Winnie the Pooh or the Prince. But as you can see, the artwork's just beautiful. And um, yeah, it's just such, a, it's like a hug in a book. And it's just like about, you know, keeping on going and being kind to yourself and um, the people around you. And uh, Charlie McKessie, that's the author. You can follow him on Instagram. He shares a lot of his quotes and um, illustrations for free. Also, um, yeah, this is a great book. Um, that I've listened to twice on Audible. So um, I don't know if I'm allowed to actually say the title on this webinar, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a, you know, F-U-C-K. However, it's not about not caring. It's about caring about the right things because, you know, otherwise we've only got so much energy as human beings. So thanks to Greg, my uh, business partner, for that recommendation. Um, and then this is another thing I want to leave you guys with. So that 10 commandments for reducing stress, I, uh, I've literally printed that out and put it on my wall next to my bed. Um, you know, uh, it's just such a good reminder about how to look after yourself and, you know, be your own best friend rather than worst enemy. So thou shalt not be perfect or try to be, not try to be all things to all people. Um, that thou shalt leave things undone that ought to be done. Thou shalt not spread thyself too thin. This next one's a big one for business owners. Thou shalt learn to say no. Thou shalt schedule time for thyself and thy support network. Uh, you should switch off and do nothing regularly. Sometimes you can be boring, untidy, inelegant, and unattractive, and that's fine. Thou shalt not feel guilty and most importantly, thou shalt not be thine own worst enemy, but thine own best friend. Okay, so um, I think I'm right on time pretty much. Um, thank you. That's um, a photo I took a couple of weeks ago when I went to the beach after work. Um, how lucky are we? You know, another big thing is gratitude. You know, if you're stopping each day to recognize things you're grateful for. It's going to bring you more of those things rather than make you think about things that bother you um so pretty much guys thank you for listening i really hope you've uh, gotten something out of today sorry about the um loud siren blaring next to us thank you to business station and the asbaz program for allowing us to uh have this webinar today um if you would like to get in touch with me i have my contact details here but i will i will send an email to everybody uh, who's registered for this webinar with my details. Um, yeah, and guys, if you aren't familiar with um, the ASVAS program and Business Station, uh, you know, please do yourself a favor and jump on their website, which is there, because you can access many more free webinars um, from many different, um, you know, presenters, uh, workshops, and you can even book one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with um, business and uh, marketing experts from many fields. So um, yeah, I've used Business Station a lot for my business to learn and upskill in areas uh, that I'm not an expert in. So if you have any questions about that, um, I will put some information in the email that I send you. And um, you can also, um, yeah, you can also follow me on Instagram, McNaught Media, um, or reach out to me here. Our contact details are here, but um, yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any um, requests or feedback and would like to, um, yeah, know about any other um, topics, please feel free to give me your suggestions. I can um, pretty much do a webinar on anything within this resilience and well-being um, field. Um, I've also got one coming up next week, which is completely different, but it's on um, the latest trends for Instagram for business, which is something that I teach a lot of. So thanks very much, guys. Um, and I will look forward to hopefully seeing you guys uh, in person or one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, I hope that you guys have a great day and that you uh, take away something from today. Uh, well, some, Alita said, why don't you do a fortnightly virtual meeting like this and just spend 
20 minutes just boosting us, your fans. Hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can. Uh, there's no reason why I can't. It's a good suggestion. I've been, yeah, open to anything. So I'll definitely have a think of how I can um, do that, guys. Um, cool. Well, thanks again. Have a great day. And thank you to Business Station. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Thanks again. Bye.